In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The composer, Ludwig von Beethoven, particularly early in his life, was a somewhat coffee and judgmental person. And he was known to, when he was playing a concert, as he was in addition to being a composer, a accomplished pianist, uh, when he was playing a concert in which he judged that his audience was not sufficiently appreciative or paying sufficient attention to his music. He had this habit of playing one of his most calming, beautiful, pastoral pieces. And he played it with such sweetness, with all of his powers of musicality, to make it as sweet and loving a performance as possible. So that at the end of this beautiful, calming piece of music, there would be such an air of almost stillness, songless, people almost being asleep. And he would let the last notes of the piece die away in full quiet. And then he would take his entire form and smash it down on the keys, creating a dissonant roar from the piano. Pop them out. And that's kind of what Jesus is doing in 2002. You see, Jesus spends the 12th chapter of Luke's Gospel. After everything that Jesus has been doing, after all the healings, all the promises, all the things that we love to hear from Jesus, blessed are the poor, blessed are the peacemakers, after all of that from Jesus, Jesus stops. And says, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand how these things work? You need to be ready. I'm not doing what you think I am doing. Indeed, Jesus talks in this morning's gospel about the baptism of people underground. He's not talking about the baptism that he had in the Jordan River at the beginning of his ministry. He's talking about his passion death and resurrection of Jerusalem. He has already explained this to the disciples. He has already let them in on what is going to happen. And he's already kind of said to the crowd that something like this is going to happen. And so today he's, he's trying to get them to understand that what Jesus is doing, what he is accomplishing in Jerusalem is going to be a, a moment in time that everyone will have to make a Everyone will have to make a decision. It's kind of like thousands of people in the mountains by the way. I grew up in Montana, right next to the top of the line. And people would build their houses up on the line. Uh, and they would almost always build them so that one side of the roof would go east and one side of the roof would go west. And they did this because they wanted to get the sun. So, 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 so. But what that meant was that in the summer, when we would have massive rainstorms that would come through and stuff over the continent of life, these, these raindrops that would fall on the roofs of these houses would have to make a decision. Because if they fell on the east side of the roof, they were going to end up going into the water system that went from creeks Missouri River, and then to the Mississippi River, and then to the Gulf of Mexico. And if they moved over about two inches and fell on the west side of the river, they're going to go into different creeks. But then they're going to the Clarkville, and then they're going to the Snake, but then they're going to the Columbia, but then they're going to the Mississippi. And each one way, or the other, completely changed the direction of that 
Well, and that's what this moment in time is that Jesus is saying. It is a decision point. The kingdom of God is coming and it is here amongst you. Jesus says they're preaching. And it is the same time for decision as it always is when God speaks to God's people. From the very beginning, God is offering us decisions. When God goes to Noah and says, do you want to build the ark or not? You can build the ark and save, or you can decide to go. God goes to Abraham. You can leave her and start a new life in this new land that will be where you can stay. He goes, God goes to Moses and says, You can go and bring my people out of suffering in Egypt, your people out of suffering in Egypt, or you can just keep paying goods. They're always given a choice. Indeed, God, with Moses as God's mouthpiece, goes to the Israelites in their sojourn in the wilderness and says, God lays between before you two choices this day. Life and blessing, or death and cursing. Choose life. Like, not a hard choice, but it is yours to choose. And again and again and again, God offers the, people, the world, God's people, a choice. Even this reading from Prophet Isaiah, or most succinctly put in the Prophet Micah, chapter 6 of the, of the book of the Prophet Micah, you have a choice, God says. If you want to do what is in, what it looks like to be in a relationship with me, if you choose to be in a relationship with me, then you know what to do. It does not require you to make sacrifices bulls or oil or on your firstborn out of anything. What you need to do to be in a relationship with me, God says in my name, is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Choose those things and you will be in God's kingdom. And Jesus turns to the crowd and says, you know when it's going to rain, you know when it's going to get hot. You know how to look for these things. But do you not see the time for this choice is here among you? It is me. So it is time to choose. And yes, that choice will come with condition. It will come, it will look like I have scattered peace, Jesus said. But that peace is merely the status quo. And everyone, when the status quo is broken, tends to divide into one camp or the other. Either, no, we like the status quo work for us, let's keep it. Or, no, the status quo, let's burn down the status quo and build something else. And wait for something better to break. And people will be divided. But notice when Jesus talks about how households will be divided. Father and son, mother and daughter. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Having grown up in a household, having had a father, had a mother, had a father. Part of me looks at Jesus and says, and this is different than normal. <laughs> what Jesus God is doing is, is pointing out the reality that we are always coming to decision points. And we are always coming to different decisions than our family because we are different people. Every person has a choice. Jesus says that's part of the marvelous power of the presence of God that God has made us to make decisions. Who we will be and whose we will be. Jesus wants the crowd to hear and to choose here and now as the kingdom is breaking into the world. Not when it has already come, not when the decision has needed to, needs to be made on the spot, but to begin to choose now. It's not about feelings. It's not about wishes. It is about actions. To do justice. Not to hope for justice. Not to think justice would be a good idea, but to do justice. 
not to think about mercy or have merciful thoughts or feelings, but to love mercy and love for Jesus is always the word. Not to think about God. Not to have warm, fuzzy feelings about God, but to walk humbly with God. These are the things that Jesus encourages us, Jesus cajoles us, Jesus implores us to choose in this moment and for all time. Because the kingdom is coming indeed, Jesus says in his gospel, it is here among us. Sometime after the life of Louis Juan Beto, the composer of Dorsey wrote uh, a piece that most of us know because of Walt Disney. Because he plucked it out of semi obscurity and put it in the movie Fantasia. The piece is not on the line. But for the first 20 years of my life, I thought it was called the devil of Paul. But it's not. It's called the Bible. And of course, we wrote a particular thunderstorm that they saw in the interface poem that crashed over on all night long. And when it was first debuted, about a third of the audience walked out because it was such a force. It made them feel so much, so hard to hear that they could not stay till the end. And what they missed, if they chose to, they made that choice. What they missed was that last two and a half minutes of the piece where the storm ends just as the dawn. Almost a mirror of Beethoven's score. The crashing of the storm coming into the soft dawn of the moon. That kingdom is breaking. That dawn is coming, Jesus says. Like a purifying, life giving fire. Begins with my baptism in Jerusalem and my passion, death, and resurrection. But even before that, if you have eyes to see what is coming, choose now. Choose life. Choose to do justice. To love mercy. To love comfort. Whatever you choose, choose now. Because the kingdom is here.